season four is finally here and I got the best settings for you guys. So we're starting here in Windows. We're gonna go to the search bar and type in game and you're gonna see game mode settings pop up. So click on that. On the left side here, make sure you're under game mode and then turn game mode on. On the right side, you're gonna see graphic settings. Now, a lot of you guys are gonna have this checked on where it says hardware accelerated GPU scheduling, but you actually wanna turn this off. In most games, having this turned on is actually going to improve your performance, but I just benchmarked the difference between having this on and off. And as you can see by the benchmarks, we are actually getting more FPS by having this turned off. But then we're gonna go back to the search bar and we are going to type in background and you're gonna see background apps pop up here. And you wanna turn this off because otherwise these apps are all gonna be running in the background when you're gaming, which will affect performance. And then if you do use Google Chrome, open it up and click the three dots in the top right hand corner and then click on settings and it'll bring up these options here on the left. So from there, click on system and you'll see it says continue running background apps when Google Chrome is closed. Make sure to turn that off. Otherwise, Google Chrome is always eating up resources in the background, even when it's not open. But before we move on, I want to mention that changing your settings in Windows and in the game can really only take your PC so far. And if you want to get the most out of your PC, the only way to do that is by overclocking, which is why I partnered up with FPS Hub. They're a company that specializes in overclocking and audio. So I did a benchmark testing the comparison of how much FPS I got on my PC before and after their benchmarks. And the difference is absolutely crazy. Look at this. We got almost 45 extra FPS. But not only that, they will also recommend PC parts that are best for your PC to get the most out of it. And for my PC, it was new RAM. So I did a benchmark after I got the new RAM and they tuned the RAM and everything. So you can see here before everything, I was getting 302 average FPS. FPS on hotel. And then afterwards, I was averaging 394 FPS. So almost 100 FPS difference, which is absolutely ridiculous. And I highly recommend you guys checking them out. Just go to fpshub.org. Otherwise, link is in the description and use code WebSee for a discount on anything on the website. But from there, we're going to open up the NVIDIA control panel. If you don't know how to do that, just right click your desktop and then you'll see NVIDIA control panel. And we're going to be starting here under manage 3D settings. So I want you guys to just copy all of these settings down here. Now, one thing to mention is that if you're getting a lot of stuttering issues in the game, one thing you can try doing is changing the shader cache size here from driver default to something like 10 or 100 gigabytes. But keep in mind, this is going to use up storage on your PC, but if it fixes the issue, it fixes the issue. From there, we want to go over to change resolution and just double check that your refresh rate is set correctly here. If you know you have a high refresh rate monitor and you're not seeing the option under this little drop down menu, you most likely have one of these Ultra HD options selected. See how mine locks to 60 hertz when I select that. And you need to make sure you're under PC and then select your resolution. And then see now I get the option for all the drop downs or refresh rates, I mean. And then from there, scroll down and click on use NVIDIA color settings and change the output dynamic range to full. And don't forget to apply your settings and click yes. From there, you're going to click on adjust desktop color settings. And this is what's going to make the game look really good. So I suggest suggest you guys put the gamma to 1.10 and what gamma is adjusting is just how bright the screen is. So the higher this number, the brighter your screen is going to get. Now, obviously everyone's monitor looks different. So 1.10 looks perfect on my monitor, but it might look a little too bright or even too dull on yours. So just adjust this number accordingly. And then digital vibrance here is going to adjust how saturated your game looks. Notice how my desktop is getting very saturated as I crank that up. I personally like to use 65% for this because I don't want my game to be oversaturated, but I want the colors to pop a little more to make my visibility better. But again, everyone's monitor is different, so your monitor might already be much more saturated than mine is, so maybe you don't want to put it up to 65%, or if this isn't saturated enough for you, then try bumping this number up accordingly. Now, in the game here, we are under the graphic settings under the display tab, and starting at the top, I usually recommend you guys play in full screen exclusive because it does give the least amount of input lag possible, but I like to tab out of my game all the time, which is why I play in full screen borderless. It just makes that a lot easier. But the problem with playing in full screen borderless is that it locks your screen refresh rate. So if you do want to play in borderless, make sure your refresh rate is set correctly in your NVIDIA control panel. Otherwise, if you're playing in full screen exclusive, you won't have to worry about it because you can just select it here. Dynamic resolution, make sure this is turned off. If it's turned on, your game's going to look like absolute crap because what happens when you turn this on is your resolution is dynamically adjusting to try meeting the target 
frame rate that you would set here under show more and in order to hit that target frame rate your resolution is going to keep dropping it is going to look absolutely terrible v-sync for both gameplay and menus always turn these off these will fix screen tearing but it's going to introduce a lot of input lag which is terrible in an fps game and then there's nothing else too important under here except for display gamma if you're playing on a computer monitor make sure this is on 2.2 if you're playing on like a big screen tv or whatever you could try 2.4 but for the majority of you you want this set to 2.2 and then let's move on over to the quality tab always make sure that your render resolution is set to 100 if it's set lower your game's gonna look like absolute trash if it's set higher it might look a little more sharp but you're gonna lose a lot of fps and for upscaling slash sharpening we want this set to fidelity fx cast this is going to give you the best visibility possible in the game this will be at the cost of some fps but any of these other options all kind of look like crap in comparison to this and visibility is extremely important in warzone you need to see these players at longer ranges and then if you click show more here you can adjust the strength of it which will adjust just how sharp the game looks so i have it set to 80 but if you want your game to look sharper you could try turning it up if you don't want it to look as sharp you could turn it down but i generally recommend having this set pretty high because the sharper your image the better your visibility is going to be at longer ranges anti-aliasing here we want this set to smaa t2x and then anti-aliasing quality set to low but one thing you'll, you're going to notice with this is that there's going to be like this shimmering effect around a lot of edges and that can bother some people and you can kind of see it here and then when i turn the setting up it gets rid of that effect for the most part but the problem with turning your anti-aliasing up is that you're going to lose a significant amount of fps so you have to decide do you want a huge boost to your fps or do you want to get rid of that shimmering effect personally the shimmering effect doesn't bother me but if it does bother you set it to filmic and then to normal but if it doesn't bother you set this to smaa t2x and then low and then video memory scale we have set to 80 here and then texture resolution i have this set to low now obviously setting this to very low is going to give you the most amount of fps but if you look at the textures on this gun here it, it looks like crap it looks absolutely terrible but as soon as we turn the textures to low you can see a drastic change in how good those textures look and then once we start getting up to the normal and high settings the difference in quality of the textures doesn't look all that much different so it's not really worth setting this too high and losing fps over a very small difference in terms of quality and the same thing applies here for texture filter anisotropic we want this set to low as well as nearby and distant level of detail we want these both set to low clutter draw distance you do want to set this to short and then particle quality we want set to low particle quality level set to very low i realize we're setting a lot of these settings to low or very low but guys the difference in quality of the game doesn't look all that much different and you'll get a huge boost in fps by doing so and then bullet impacts we want this turned off persistent damage layers we have this turned off did i say bullet impacts off i meant to say on and then shader quality set to low tessellation turned off on demand texture streaming we want this turned off if you turn this on here what the game is doing is it's downloading textures to your computer while you're playing the game which could introduce lag so definitely make sure that is turned off scrolling down a bit streaming quality we want set to low volumetric quality set to low deferred physics quality off and then water quality here we have set to default moving down to shadow and lighting now shadow map resolution is something i've seen talked about a lot i personally have this set to very low and as you can see here the shadows on very low look like absolute crap and if that bothers you you could turn this up but to be honest even on the higher settings the shadows still do kind of look like crap which is why i just went for very low i really could care less how shadows look and setting your shadows to very low gives a huge boost to your fps but if you hate how the shadows look on very low i would recommend doing normal if you want them to look somewhat decent but if you just want the max fps put it to very low screen space shadows we have turned off spot shadow quality turned low spot cache we have turned low but spot cache is a setting you can change if you are having stuttering issues so if you're getting a lot of really bad stuttering try setting it to high or ultra and see if that helps fix the issue for you and then particle lighting we have set to low ambient occlusion off screen space reflections off static reflection quality low weather grid volumes off and then nvidia reflex low latency we want this turned on depth of field world motion blur weapon motion blur film grain turn all that off that's just introducing screen effects which are going to absolutely destroy your visibility then moving over to the view tab field of view is personal preference if you want to see more around you raise it up ads field of view though you definitely 
want this set to affected because it is going to help your recoil control immensely but this will be at the cost of you having your reticle more zoomed out when you ads so it will make it harder to see and hit people at longer ranges but you will have significantly less recoil weapon field of view and vehicle field of view i have these both set to default now you could set these to wide if you want your gun to look a little smaller which could increase your visibility but i just prefer how it looks on default and then first person and third person camera movement turn these all the way down the least that way your camera is not moving all over the place and that's just going to make the game overall easier to look at and is going to help your visibility a lot because your camera's not shaking around all over the place and then let's move on to the audio settings over here so the best audio mix is pc because pc is giving you the most compressed audio in the game which means quiet sounds like footsteps are going to be louder and louder sounds like gunshots are going to be quieter it's all going to be compressed together to like a more equal level and then click more here under master volume and make sure your gameplay music volume is turned all the way down and then turn your dialogue volume down i do 50 percent here that way i can still hear the operators but they're not overbearingly loud and covering up audio cues like footsteps and stuff like that and then make sure your effects volume is at 100 this is very important because this is going to affect sounds like footsteps and then scrolling down under the audio tab one other thing you want to change here towards the bottom is reduce tonight of sound you want to turn this on what this is doing is it's getting rid of that really annoying ringing sound that happens when you get flashbang so this is just kind of a quality of life thing and then let's move over to interface so under interface you're going to see color customization here so click on that and then change this color filter to filter 2 change color filter target to both and then set the world color intensity and interface color intensity both to 100 these settings here in combination with the color settings in the nvidia control panel is going to make your visibility just look absolutely incredible and it's going to make the game look just better overall and then scrolling down under the interface tab if you do play on a bigger monitor like i do i play on a 27 inch monitor something you can do to make your hud easier to see is turn the vertical and horizontal hud bounce all the way down to zero and what this is doing is it's squeezing your hud in closer to the center of your screen so stuff like your mini map is going to be a lot easier to see and closer to the center of your screen instead of stretched all the way out to the corners so it just makes it a little easier to see and i recommend trying that out and scrolling down you want to set your crosshairs here to static and then scrolling down even further i like to turn center dot on and turn center dot scale to larger what this is doing is it's adding a larger dot to the center of your screen which will make centering easier and then scrolling down even further i like to make sure skip introduction movie is turned on so you don't have to deal with that every time you open the game and then inverted flash is a good option here if the bright white light of getting flash banged annoys you what will happen if you turn this on is instead of your monitor just going bright white it'll flash black and Instead. So if flashbangs are hurting your eyes, you could try this out. I personally tried it, and every time I got flashbang, my screen would just go black, and I kept thinking my computer was turning off, so I, I left this off. But if these settings did help you out, make sure to drop a like and subscribe if you're new, and don't forget to check out fpshub.org and use code WEBSY for a discount code over there. So, use the web. Peace.